Good morning, good morning, good morning, champions. This is the breakfast session with the coach. I'm so excited today we're hosting one of my favorite, favorite moms. Guys, I call her mom because, wow, she's one of the amazing women. She's one of those amazing, amazing, amazing mothers. She's one of the amazing speakers. Um, Her name is Bridget Edwards, guys. Um. We did the testing this morning and I'm, I'm and I'm excited. I know this is going to be a great show. She's an author. She's what we call a complementary mental health therapist, guys. Wow. Today, if you've got a stress, if you've got things that are going around your mind, if you've got ABC that you cannot get right, guys, this is the perfect platform. Um to tune in our show guys i'm waiting for her i don't want to waste time as soon as she comes on board we are going to start guys um who coronavirus is still there guys coronavirus is still there and i understand that um we've got um over 70 000 active um cases around the country and um, we can we can we can't give up yet guys um there's so many things there's so many that there's so much to life um than um uh, giving up and um, I'm, 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 I'm gonna say if 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 we're going to get this coronavirus right and if you're going to change the status quo we need to know that um responsibility comes first and if we are you are responsible you not only say i'm responsible but you act on being responsible um i can see my mom is there she's already here this is going to be a great show guys the, uh, the breakfast in your coach i'm here Real startup master class because we're telling it the way it is, guys. I can see I've got a reddish there. What is going on? Hi, mom. Hi, how are you, Mars? Hello, I'm everybody. good and you. Hi, I'm, hi, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'm so good. I'm so excited. It's been long. When did the last time we talked? Is I think 2015 or 2016. It's a while back, yes, indeed. Very yeah, much so. so. <laughs> yes, it's pretty. <laughs> But but I'm still I'm still having a friend, my friend here. You know, this keeps me going. I I I, I can't get our way of this thing called stress gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you still got it with you? <laughs> yeah, I'm still I'm still, still still on my possession. Great book, great oh, book, great book, I must tell. Um, Mambridge, the reason I called you, um, especially Tuesday, I want to celebrate you today. I want to uh, 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 encourage you. To keep doing what you're doing because it's exceptionally well a uh, great work that you're doing. But before we go there, people will think, "Hey, Moss, now how do you know Bridget? Bridget, how do you know Moss?" <laughs> That's another story for another day. But um, I, I want to celebrate you. I want to appreciate you. Um, you're so good and you're so um inspiring. Um, the first time I met you, I was like, "Is she going to talk to me?" Because you had that face, serious face. I don't know why, but. After that, you become this bad person. <laughs> but I want to celebrate you. That's that's the bottom line. I'm I'm I'm, I'm I do. That's the reason you are part of this show. It's an amazing show. Um, we started in March. Uh, uh it's, we started in uh, uh um April after the the uh, pronouncement of the lockdown. And then people said, um, uh, uh, coach, we need some that can keep us going. And we said we said let's start a breakfast session where we're going to give some nuggets, some motivation. And it grew from one to two to two up to ten. And now we're over 100, 200, 500 viewers across the continent. And we are excited to wow. keep it going. Wow. So that's amazing. We are, you, you, are, you are watched because I can already see some uh, 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 one of the our regular uh, uh, audience, Sbongile uh, Kapepa. She's from Zambia. So this show is so growing. And you are part of the growing uh, continent. That's fantastic, Moss. Well, thank you so much for the invitation. I am so grateful to you. And yes, it is wonderful to see you again after, yeah, it is at least two or three years, I think, since I was in Muffy King with you all and uh, attended that wonderful day that you presented yeah. to us. And I, I think we were, what were we, like 100, 150 people packed in the room who we were so yeah. eager learn and get inspired and motivated and you are so good at what you do so i'm not surprised that you have a huge following across the continent so welcome to everybody who's here from wherever they are it's great to be with now, you Mars. thank you thank you thank you guys to, this is this is bridget uh bridget Edwards, guys i call her mom bridge because she's so older than me older than me so i call her my mom you know when <laughs> 
go around as, 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 as black nations. We were told that everyone that you come across is your parent, is your brother, is your sister. So this is one of those moms that I I I I I I I I I I I I call them my mom. So Bridge, um, allow me to call Bridge you Bridge today. Uh, allow me to call you Bridge today. Um, welcome to the breakfast session, guys. I can already see people are coming on, are coming in, and I appreciate everybody who's here. Um, uh, before we go on, mom, can you can you just tell us who is Bridget Edward? Okay, I am, uh, I think, a seventh generation South African, born and bred, grew up on the farm. Um, I spoke uh, Tosa before I could speak English, believe it or not. And then we moved from uh, e the Eastern Cape up, up to uh, KZN, where I learned to speak some Zulu, which I've lost, unfortunately. And through my own <laughs> trials and tribulations and traumas and problems that I had from very early on as a child, um, I carried a lot of stress and a lot of trauma, which is why I teach what I do today, uh, because mm -hmm. I understand it so intimately. And then prior to that uh, and becoming a therapist and getting into the mental health space, I had my own business. I've traveled all over the world. I've been to oh, just about every single continent. Um, immersed myself in various cultures, which I'm so grateful for because I learned so much from all my travels. They say, if you travel the world, it broadens your mind and it really, really does, Moss. So everything I do today in my therapy space is based on my own personal experience uh, from the things that I've done and also from the mistakes that I've learned along the way. Because, you know, unless you make a mistake, uh, which some people say is a failure. And if, if we don't make mistakes, we're never going to learn anything. So it's through my own mistakes and the trials and tribulations that I've experienced that I am where I am today, doing the work I do. And I love connecting with people. Um, I love being with different cultures. I love immersing myself in different cultures because that's how I learn. That's how I grow. Mm. Um, and I, although we all have different skin tones and colors, we're still human beings inside. You know, as they mm. say, we all bleed red regardless of what color we are, regardless of what gender, regardless of what culture, religion. We are all human beings. And I think we have enough challenges in this world without us having to have additional challenges. And stress is one of the biggest challenges that we have as human beings. Mm. Wow. No, no, uh, 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 thank, thank you. Thank you, Mambridge. Um, I, I think your, your, your internet is, is a little bit um, uh, um, stressy that side. Is, are you getting it right? I can hear you clearly. Yeah, yeah. Um, this month, um, from the uh, from the first of my, uh, August, we 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 said we're not going to in, uh, invite any male um speaker, any male um um um, um guest in our show. We're going to do it precisely all women affair this month, and you are closing it today because we are closing it now officially. So um, I'm I'm so excited, but um, I know you you've, you've traveled around the world, but before we go outside the country. Do you think we are doing enough for women in the country? No, not mm. and and that's just not not only in South Africa but around the globe. Uh, mm. There is is not enough being done for women to empower women, but specifically in South Africa, I don't believe there is anywhere near enough that has been for, uh, done for women. Uh, I certainly feel that women entrepreneurs or mompreneurs, as the word is for those who have children, I really don't believe enough has been done to support them mm. because mothers are mothers and women have they bring a huge heart into the space. And mm. where we are in a workspace that is predominantly male, it's all, mm -hmm. there's not enough heart in the space. Women are nurturers, women, the way they communicate. Um, there is, women bring such a different energy into the space. We are naturally creative. We are naturally intuitive. 
So as a result, I really believe that there should definitely be a lot more done for women. And thank you. I appreciate that you're closing me out on um, as your last lady speaker for the month of August. Thank you, Moss. I do appreciate that honor. You're welcome. You're, you're welcome. Um, you, 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 you are such a globetrotter. And, 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 and but, but by just doing that, it, you, 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 you say you, you, you get a sense of healing because um, um, that's what I do. Every time when I, when I travel, um, there's, there's a part of healing that comes in me. But Mambridge, we are struggling. We are struggling. And with this um, pandemic that has came across the, con the, the world, it's, it's, it, the travels have increased from, from being single to double. And people are going through so much. And in your book, you, you're stressing three things that I know you talk a lot about, is stress, anger, and bitterness. How do we move from that part of life? Moss, I agree. At the moment, I certainly believe that we are in a greater pandemic in terms of mental health than the COVID virus ever was. And my mm -hmm. biggest concern is that we are going to, this, this mental health issue that we have now is going to be perpetuated for a very long time. That is a huge concern I have. I, I honestly believe that we actually have a global mental health crisis right now. How do we transmute our anger and our bitterness? That's a very good question, Moss. It, and it's a very powerful question because what stress does, remember whenever we get stressed, we go into a fight or flight. So when we go into the fight mode, we become more aggressive. We get more angry. And that's where, and if the anger is so extreme, that is where we're going to see rage coming out, which is very, yeah. very unhealthy. Um, I just want to say, now this is going to sound like a contradiction. Anger yeah. is a very powerful emotion and a very uh -huh. important emotion if it is used properly. Okay, so by that, I mean, you can, you can channel your anger in, into something, into something creative, into exercise. You know, there are good mm. ways of channeling anger, but going and beating a child or beating your wife or attacking somebody in the traffic is not channeling your anger in the right way. Okay, mm -hmm. and this is not a judgment on people. I understand that when you get into a stress state, you will snap very quickly if you've had a lot of stress building up and you become angry really, really quickly. So how does one transmute and trans and change that anger very easily? Things like sport, running. You can get rid of your anger very easily by applying that because you're getting that energy out of your body. Awareness of your emotions is very, very important. Being aware that you are angry and acknowledging, you know what, Moss, I'm feeling angry right now. Or if you're in a relationship with your partner and you are fighting, just say, I am angry. Admit that you are angry. It's not a weakness mm. to be angry, but admit mm. it. Acknowledge it and admit it because that awareness goes, okay, so now I'm angry. I'm not going to take it out on somebody. And then do something. If you have to, for men, if it means punching something like a pillow or a, a, you know, a wall or something, get that anger out of you, but don't take it out on other people. You know, there's a, a lovely saying, a lovely quote that I have come across, which you will see in my book, is anger is one letter short of danger. If you look at wow. the word danger and anger, you know, so you can, you can channel that anger into something positive or you can channel that anger into something negative. Whenever we channel that anger into something negative, it becomes highly destructive. And then we end up with guilt and remorse and blame and shame afterwards because now we channel that anger in the wrong way. So by mm. channeling that anger into something positive, for instance, when I was a lot younger, I used to run a lot of marathons. I played a lot of hockey, field hockey. I was mm -hmm. horse riding. I was doing all sorts of things because I didn't know how, I didn't understand back then, this is 20, 30 years ago, I didn't understand how much I had, how much anger I had within myself. 
So mm. in 1989, I lost my only brother in a car accident. A few years later, my mum died of cancer. And wow. I didn't realize that that loss that I was carrying, I hadn't dealt with that loss because I didn't understand and I didn't certainly didn't know what I know today. And I had all this anger and almost rage inside of me. And the only mm. way I knew how to get that out of me, and it, was, it wasn't that I had the awareness. It was an intuitive thing. I just need to run. And I would mm. literally run marathon after marathon after marathon. Every day I was training 10, 15 kilometers. And I was trying to get that anger mm. out of me. And mm. so that's how I uh, uh, channeled my anger in a healthy way. But at the same time, I wasn't dealing with what was going on internally. I mm. wasn't aware of the pain that I had. I knew that I'd lost my brother. I knew that I'd lost my mother. I had that awareness, but I didn't have the awareness that that was the destructiveness inside me was as a result of the grief that I was carrying from all those years. So this is why I no, say no, no, no. it's really important to have the awareness understand where the anger is coming from. We could be angry about work. We could be angry because someone cut us off in traffic or somebody said something to us or we saw a post on social media that makes us angry. But when we have mm. the awareness of why we are angry, then we can do something about it and channel that in the right way. Does that make sense? Wow, wow, wow. No, thank you very much, guys. Um, this is this is Bridget Edwards, author of Stress Gone, one of the book that um is, is so challenging, is so helpful. Um one uh she, she's a complimentary uh, mental health therapist. Let me appreciate Bridget Calvi, she say mom bridge. Let me appreciate my uh, producer in my feet and Kenosi Mologo as Bongile Capepa in uh, Zambia, everybody who's watching, I appreciate your time, I appreciate uh, what you're doing, I, I appreciate the fact that you're being part of the greater show that is growing in Africa. Mambridge, um, who is most prone and vulnerable to, to these things? Are, are, are men too vulnerable? Are, 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 I'm trying to go to the current situation of gender-based violence that we are seeing in, in, in the country. But my, my, my question, because I interviewed a lot of women, I interviewed somebody in Nigeria, I interviewed a lady in um, uh, 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 Namibia, I interviewed ladies from Botswana, I interviewed a lady um, from um, Zambia, I interviewed a lady from Tanzania, as far as Tunisia, and they say, Mars, this problem is across the continent, it's not only South Africa. But before we go there, who is more prone, uh, vulnerable to this issue? Are men a male counterparts or women, uh, female counterparts, who is exactly prone to this um, problem? Okay, so if we're talking gender-based violence, let's mm. be honest, the violence is coming from the men. Yeah. Okay. So let, or do you agree that that's, that's where the issue no, uh, is? The violence is coming okay. from the men. What, what, what I'm trying to say is... um. We know that uh, men are, are committing this uh, heinous crime against women. But um, to what you're saying, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to think, to say, who is more vulnerable? Um, because um, I, one lady um, I was interviewing, uh, then a smart lady, young lady in, in Namibia, she said, most, a lot of women are, are prepared emotionally from the young age. And men are not prepared emotionally. That is why they resort to anger and and. and and muscles when things are tough. So my, my question before we attend the gender-based violence issue is who is more vulnerable? Are, are, are men more vulnerable to this? Um, uh, uh, because it's a disease uh, or, or women are more vulnerable until now we come to an issue where people now are fighting because it starts small as an argument, grow from argument to now threats, go from threats now to physical touch. But before we reach that, there's somebody in the in, in that um, um 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 partnership or in that um house household who is more vulnerable. So my question is, who is more vulnerable? Are men more vulnerable into stress, bitterness, and they are not dealing with it in any way, or are women more vulnerable now when things get heated up? They now they start resorting to now anger. Mas, I'm so glad you asked that question, and that's why I asked, where is the anger coming from, and 
the mm -hmm. way I see the gender-based violence is the anger is coming mostly from the men. Not to say that women mm -hmm. don't also perpetuate it. I totally get that too. Mm -hmm. Because as women, mm -hmm. we can get very aggressive and become violent, okay? I, I'm just going to lay mm -hmm. that out on the table. My mm -hmm. understanding is that men who are resorting to anger and gender-based violence against women are men who are, as you've rightly put it, vulnerable. They are men who are feeling insecure. They are men who don't feel, they are stressed, they are angry. Why are they stressed and angry is the real question. Why are they feeling unsafe and insecure? Why are they, why do they feel that they are not manly enough? That they have to resort to resolving their problems by hitting and abusing a woman okay mm -hmm. that tells me that the men themselves and i've been saying this on several groups that i've posted um comments on is that sure we can say that it's the man's fault but if we go back in that man's history and i've seen this in my therapy practice that so many of the men who have come to me for anger management issues mm -hmm. because they are so scared that the next thing they're going to do is attack their wife or their girlfriend or their mother or their sister. Mm. Whenever I work with them, Moss, underneath all of the anger is this enormous pain, this enormous trauma that goes right mm. back to their childhood. And very, very often, now I can only talk from a South African context, very often mm. those those men were abused as children. Their fathers or their grandfathers or their elder brothers beat the living daylights out of them when they were little. Those mm -hmm. men are so insecure because in their, within their beings, they do not feel safe. They do, wow. are so frightened. They have been bullied. They have been, as I say, abused and traumatized. Now they enter into a relationship with somebody who's slightly weaker than them and they are trying to say what they say with aggression and they're not being heard, they're not being seen and they're not being felt. What happens is that triggers them into an angry space because now they feel even more insecure in the relationship. This, this problem of gender-based violence goes right back to the very early stages of life. It goes mm -hmm. right back to those initial years, what we call the formative years of a child's life. It goes back to as far back as a little baby or even two, three, four, five years old. For some men, it goes back to high school where they were bullied and they mm -hmm. were beaten by their alcoholic father or their alcoholic uncle, or they were abused sexually. You know, there are so many, and I'm not making excuses. This is the real issue of gender-based violence. And wherever we have um, low-income groups where there is a lack of education, the problem seems to be greater because mm. everybody's emotions are running high. Their emotional IQ is not as high, okay? They haven't mm. got the infrastructure. Now, we see this very commonly because if you look back in the old times, you know, 20, 30 years ago, even apartheid times in South Africa, the men left mm. home to go and work in the mines. So the women were left at home with um, very little masculine energy around them. The fathers mm. would only come back occasionally when they did come back or sent money back. There was no relationship with the children and their fathers. Wow. So mm. they never were grown up and never had the security and the um, sort of moral compass and guidance of their fathers. So I've seen this in so many of the men that I have counseled. They said to me, I didn't have, my father wasn't in, my, in the relationship. Or my mother had two or three boyfriends and I never knew which was my father. Because the boyfriends mm. would then beat me. 
you know um mm. so i've heard this not so many times and it really it, for me it is exceptionally heartbreaking when i hear this because mm. basically we've got this grown man who is a big guy but inside he's like a little child he mm. doesn't have the emotional intelligence or he doesn't have the emotional maturity to deal with his emotions and he doesn't know what's going on he just feels threatened he feels unsafe and he feels insecure now i am not by explaining this mos i am not exonerating their behavior at the same mm. time i am not saying that ladies deserve to be beaten please don't get me wrong mm. by me explaining what i'm explaining where a lot of the men come from mm. beating anybody beating a child beating an animal beating anybody is the wrong thing whether you are mm. male or a female whether you're an adult or a child resorting to violence is a problem there's another element that this comes from if we look at what television shows are people watching mm. what video games are people watching mm -hmm. most people are watching violence a lot of the rap music that ha that comes out has violence in it so mm. then we are getting this external input which is violent and then we are in a country and even around the world where violence is acceptable this mm. is where we we need to change this narrative we need to change what we are allowing ourselves to receive from the outside world so watching aggressive violent videos being involved in those t um those uh, video games that are aggressive you're desensitizing yourself by participating mm. in that so that wow. is now another problem and then we bring alcohol into it and drugs into it and then mm. of course right now we are in a situation where people haven't got an income So of course the violence is going to drop because they haven't got an income. They haven't got the mm. self the sense of self-worth and self-esteem. You know, I mean, think about anybody who loses a job right now and was the mm. man of the house. His self-worth, self-esteem is going to nose dive because wow. he feels useless. He feels worthless, you know. Who You just made me emotional, <laughs> Mambrit. You just made me emotional because I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, um If if we were to close our eyes as governments as politicians as ordinary citizens close our eyes and and think deeply we will agree that no one is born an animal no 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 one is born a criminal no no one mm. is born um heartless so it, it it's a process that brews inside us and in most cases we live it until it it is a, it, it's at a level that we cannot control it anymore I'll give you a practical yeah. example. My parents divorced when I was two months old. Something that I didn't know. I wasn't. I couldn't even realize that these people have divorced. I didn't have a proper relationship with my mother, and I was raised by my grandmother. And my grandmother, who's from the old traditional school, to say, for you to raise a child, you need to be bully. But mm. out of everything, I had a wonderful poor dad, who had emotions and. had his own ways in his own style of raising a child till now i never i've never seen that man angry i've never seen that man beating anyone and those those are the principles that he raised now it, i'm asking myself if he was not there what kind of a man would have been because his his teachings taught me you you're going to grow without your mother next to because when they divorced my father took me and and my mother took my elder brother so it, it and the process it taught me to be the humble and because a lot of people will say must you you'll never you'll never be rich because of a heart that you possess that to me i was raised by my grandmother who said whatever you have by a father who said whatever you have is not yours you need to share it so my question will be i i know in one, in a, in, in a book in one of chapters you're talking about the subconscious mind and the conscious mind what 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 do Where do we differentiate the two and how can we try to help in a process that things that you store now they grow within uh, 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 along the process and when they are big enough becoming a barrier and obstacle in your life you cannot change them anymore so 
how how do we tell this man? How will you tell this boys? How do you tell this young man to say it's right to be angry? It's right to come from a background that is not so good to talk about. But this is not you in the next 15 years, in the next 30 years. You're going to get a woman, but you don't need to treat the woman the way you were raised. You don't need to take your anger. You don't need to nourish your anger. You don't, you don't need to, to embrace this anger to a level that one day you think it's the right way of dealing with things. Mm. Moss, that's such a, a very good question, but also complicated at the same time. If we uh -huh. could switch our emotions on and off like a light switch, you know, you just flick the switch on and off. Uh, uh -huh. Trust me, we would, we would all switch the bad emotions off and we would only keep the happy emotions, right? Because... We would all want to be happy 24-7. We would all want to be joyful and excited and in a, in a positive space of mind 24-7 mm -hmm. if we had a choice. The thing is we can't switch that, those emotions on and off. <laughs> now, here's the interesting uh, thing. Our, our emotions come from our subconscious. So it's not coming from the conscious mind. Okay. Wow. Yes, we can consciously choose to be emotional. We can consciously choose to be happy, say positive affirmations and try to put ourselves into that healthy mindset. The problem mm -hmm. is that our emotions, our habits and our behaviors comes from the subconscious mind. Now the subconscious mind is, let's just, if, I'm sure, and I've got it in the book and I'll, put something up for somebody to see if they want to a bit later, is we have the, the typical iceberg that we are familiar with. 10% mm. of the iceberg sits above the surface of the water and 90% of the iceberg is below the surface of the water. So yeah. if, if you have that imagination of the iceberg, we take that iceberg because that is usually what is used as a design and a model to show people what's the consciousness and what's the subconsciousness. I like mm. to take that iceberg and I put it next to me as a person. So 10% of me is here, is the conscious mind. Everything what? below here is the subconscious mind, okay? Wow. So every, all our emotions, our habits and our behaviors and our beliefs come from the subconscious. This is mm -hmm. what is known as learned behavior from when we were those tiny little children in our formative years, where we were like little sponges. We literally, we didn't know, um, we would just did what we were told. We, whatever was happening in the home environment is what we became. We are all products of our environment. So in other words, we are products of the conditioning that was given to us by our parents. Now I'm not blaming parents because most parents are only parenting the way they were parented by their parents, mm. okay? You can see how this is handed down through the generation. Mm -hmm. Very often, a father who was beaten and got, got given hidings as a, as, a, as a child, he's going to give hidings to his children because that's all he knew, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, it's not to blame him, but that's all he knew. Whereas a mom and a parent or a dad who were very kind and very soft and very gentle, like you experienced with your dad, that's what you teach. That's what you're teaching your child to do. So the input mm -hmm. of our parents and our grandparents is very important in terms of our emotional conditioning and our behavioral conditioning from when we're young. But now we're all adults. So how do we switch and change this off? So the first thing mm -hmm. I say to people is become aware of your emotions. Now, when I'm talking about emotions, I'm not just talking about happiness and sadness, okay? I'm also talking about that feeling in your body. You can feel when you're sad. You feel it in your heart. Your heart feels sore or you feel it in your tummy. That is a critical sign. Your body is showing you that there's an emotional issue here. When we get angry, mm -hmm. we feel like we're burning inside. We can actually feel this heat generating. So our body, can you see how the body is showing us what is happening? If we're mm -hmm. feeling depressed, we feel, for a lot of people who feel depressed, they say to me, I just feel numb. 
I feel like a numb, empty feeling inside. You can feel, and you can mm. see where my hands are. I'm showing you. This is where we feel it in our heart area, which is our subconscious area. Remember the diagram I explained? Everything yeah. from the yeah. neck down is the subconscious. Everything from the neck up is the conscious. Now, Moss, let's be honest. You've got 10% of the conscious mind fighting 90% of the subconscious. What is going to win mm. every time? Mm -hmm. it, the subconscious is going to win every time. This is mm. why, and I love to use this example. This is why we, we all have New Year's resolutions. We decide, mm -hmm. okay, come Christmas time, New Year, I'm going to get healthy. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to start exercising. I'm going to lose weight. We mm -hmm. start New Year's Day, we go for two kilometers. Then mm -hmm. the 2nd of January, the 3rd, maybe the 10th of January, we're lucky we're still a bit exercising. And then suddenly, like, it just disappears. Why? Mm -hmm. Because we haven't changed what's happening here in the subconscious. We are trying to say, mm -hmm. I want to be fit and healthy. I want to lose weight. But it's coming from here. It's coming from mm -hmm. the conscious mind, which is only 10% of us. We need to change what is happening in our body. We need to mm -hmm. change what is going on in the subconscious. And mm -hmm. that is where radical, long-lasting change takes place. It's what happens in the, in the, in the subconscious. When we can identify what's going on inside us subconsciously, that's where we can change our emotions, our habits, our behaviors, and our beliefs. And trust oh, wow. me, it is really, really easy to do when you know how to do it. But we're not taught this. We're not taught this at school. Our parents didn't know about it. Our grandparents didn't know about it. And you only get a little bit of understanding when you hear like your Tony Robbins and um, Robin Banks and these mind power uh, gurus speaking where they say you need to do affirmations, you need to set goals, work on your goals, constantly affirm your goals. That's the mm -hmm. only time you really start hearing this, Moss. So this information should be taught to everybody at school. It should be wow. part of Everything we do in society, but it's not, unfortunately. That's the sad thing. Oh, I agree with you 100%. This is the breakfast session, guys, with the coach, the real startup masterclass. We're telling it the way it is, guys. This is where we're saying you got the possibilities. You got you got to be the true version of yourself. You got to unleash who you are. You got to deal with your emotions. We're telling it the way it is. This is the breakfast session. Let me appreciate Zandi Bodman. Let me appreciate Lichao Nolo Mokwena. He says, this feels like a one-on-one one one -on -one session already. Sense is made here. Uh, so means he says, this feels like first time I saw Bridget Edwards begging my feet again. Can we do this whole day? Uh, Bridget Cal <laughs> Calvi says, truth, we are products of our environment. Thank you guys for being part of this show. Amazing, amazing. I don't think we're going to wrap up this in an hour. We're going to bring, we should bring her back again. Um, Mambridge, you said it mouthful. You said it mouthful. So how how is, um, 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 the, the the subconscious mind um, 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 how can I put it how powerful is the subconscious mind Moss it is everything it is so powerful it's 90% of who we are that is how powerful it is because as I explained all our emotions come from there our habits our beliefs our beliefs are something that is so deep inside us you know, if you have a belief that uh, the world is against you, let's say as an example, because a lot of people have this belief that the world is against them. Now you <laughs> take that belief into your work. You take that belief and that is your belief about money. That is your belief about how you interact with your friends. It's your belief when you play sport. The world is against me. Imagine if that's somebody's belief. And a lot of people have that belief, okay? Mm -hmm. A lot of people feel that even God is against them. 
So can you imagine how much pain and suffering that person is going to carry? Wow. And that is going to make them unhappy. It's going to make them miserable. It's going to never, they're never going to be able to move beyond that belief into becoming something beautiful, something magnificent. Now, I firmly believe that every one of us as human beings, regardless of our skin color, our race, our culture, where we were born, I believe that every one of us are born in the image of God. Now, it doesn't matter what your religious belief is, okay? You could be a Hindi, you could be a Muslim, you could be a Christian. You still believe in God at the end of the day, okay? I believe every one of us has a spirit of God. We were born in the image of God, meaning that we can do anything and create anything we want. That's what God does. God is a creator. So I do believe that we have access to that. We are powerful beyond measure. If you remember, Mandela quoted Marianne Williamson in, in his inauguration speech, and he said, we are in, in Marianne Williamson's poem, she says, we are powerful beyond measure. Now, if you have this belief that I, the world is against me, it's going to take a while to change that belief to then go, okay, hold on. This is my belief. If I just change my belief, remember, whatever we carry in our hearts and whatever we believe is what we are going to mirror in the world because everything out of us is just a mirror of what we carry in our heart. Mm. So by changing our belief, we will change our external circumstances. That is the power of the belief we have. Wow. So I just want to, I want to give something really powerful for people to take away. When we say, I am, and we all say this, I, my name, so I'll say, I am Bridget. What about saying the words I am is the name of God, the creator, okay? I am. So if we are able to take those I am words, instead of them being negative, so I am depressed, I am sad, I am stressed, I am unhappy, I am poor, change those words into I am phenomenal, I am beautiful, I am magnificent, I am powerful. When you change those words, you can change your belief system. Sure, it might wow. take a little bit of time, it might take a few weeks, it might take a few months even, or even a year. It is well worth changing what you say, I am. So if you want to so say, I am possible, I am successful. Can you see that changes your internal framework of what you feel and what you believe? That is what's going to manifest in your world outside of you. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So, Mambri, basically what you're saying is your, your daily affirmations, words that you speak from your mouth, the mouth is just, it's just, it's just, it's just a messenger. They, whatever you affirm, the minute you start saying I am, you affirm what the mind has communicated with the heart. Now you are taking outside uh, it outside with your mouth to say I am. So if you believe the world is closing on you, you are just affirming that I'm not going to be anything else. I am a loser. I am a nobody. So instead of being affirming negative things you need to start refreshing what your mind and your heart uh, um, um, communicate and start affirming positive things so basically what you're saying is when you start saying i am know why and when and where are you saying that absolutely Moss. that you've you've summed it up beautifully so imagine if all of us were walking around saying I am loved, I am safe, I am secure, I am a phenomenal human being, I am successful, I am powerful, I am productive, I am creative, I am a loving, kind person. Can you imagine if all of us were saying that and in time we actually believe that? How beautiful would this world be? <laughs> Wow, 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 Mambridge. Now it, it, now it makes sense because I, when I grow up, I developed this thing of to be disturbed. 
So whenever people try to push me into a negative mode of life, my emotional intelligence is so high that because I've got this affirmation that I am too blessed to be broke, I am too blessed to be um, taken for a ride. So I'm always affirming. I, but I didn't know that, but by just do using the way I am, it's an affirmation. Wow. It's so powerful. And instead of saying I have or I will, when you say I am, you are also invoking the God consciousness. You, you, you're actually pulling it. You are pulling it in. It, and, and the thing is with I am, it is in the present tense. I Ooh. will or I have is like kind of the past tense. So what you're doing is you're pulling in the energy for it is now. It is the truth. Now I am. I am wow. love. Guys, um, I think network is, is giving. Um, yes, you're there. Okay. So when, when you. This is the first session with the coach, guys. We're still with um, Mrs. Bridget Edwards. Bridge? Yes, I yeah, think I'm here, I'm here. Yeah. yeah. Wow, 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 so wow, guys. Am, we are invoking that energy and power in the moment. So for a lot of people who are not in the financial um, place in the world that they want to be, keep saying, I am successful. I am abundant. I am wealthy. I am rich. Because... The more you say that, and remember when we speak something, when we say something, we speak it into existence. That is the power mm. of the spoken word. We speak it and it becomes, our word becomes our truth. Our word becomes our reality. And then we say, I am. So what you're doing is we are literally cementing that into our energy. Mm. Wow, wow, wow. We manifest what it is we want. Wow, 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 wow. Let me appreciate everybody who's been part of this amazing show, guys. Hi, an hour is not enough. Let me appreciate Nene. Uh, Nene Wabantwana Baake. She's saying we are, we are a key to unlock the locks we've placed in our subconscious mind. And then Hobono Mang Mauka Shole, she's saying, Maybe theories like uh, uh, Bonfreber uh, pages should be incorporated in life uh, orientation subject. It will assist children to become aware of a lot of things uh, at a younger age and they, they might become better citizens. And Bridget Calve, is, uh, she says, this is true. I am a healthy money magnet. Wow. So affirmations, it makes sense. So this is what we need to, to, to dwell on our kids. This is what you need to raise our kids understanding that you need to own it any every day you need to make it your prayer that i am an engineer i am a success i am a wealth so affirmations are one most powerful uh, tools that we can use to prosper in life they are must and i am going to share so one thing i want to give as a um I want to drop a book link into the program so that people can download my Stress Gone book, okay? I am making it as an offer for people to download at whatever they can contribute, okay? Whatever their heart feels that they can contribute, whether it's 10 bucks or 100 bucks or $100, whatever they feel they want to contribute. In my book, I go into this a lot more. I explain a lot more in detail how the subconscious works. And then there are also a whole lot of other tools that they can access, which they can work with the physical body. Because when we, and I'm not saying work against the physical body, I'm saying work with the physical body. 
Because when we have this unease and discomfort inside our body, we can shift and change that. And when we do that, we bring the consciousness and the heart together. So we are marrying our thoughts and our mind and our hearts together. By doing that, now we have even more power, okay? Because now we are able to use positive affirmations, but also bring the energy of the body into that space. So we will then be able to manifest things a lot faster. We will then be able wow. to create a lot faster. And also we can get rid of a lot of those negative emotions like shame and guilt and remorse and fear, um, self-loathing, self-hatred, uh, all of those things that actually that negative energy, it's almost like, a, like we are dragging a rock around with us. It is heavy. We can let that all go. Once we let that all go, it's easier to get into the heart space of love and gratitude and joy because that is the greatest manifester ever is the sense of love and joy and peace when you have that in your heart you are you are literally a magnet a magnet for love a magnet for success a magnet for job opportunities you become a magnet for so many things i mean you will know must in your own environment none of us like to be associated with somebody who's miserable and negative they drain <laughs> us right they yeah. drain us. You can feel it. True. You walk into the room and it's like, oh, no, this person, I don't want to see them. We, like, hide away from them. But when somebody's <laughs> always happy and smiling and joyful, you just want to be with them. It's like, I want to have whatever you have because you just exude this happiness, love, and joy. We want you, what you, they have. You know. Does that make sense? Uh, that, yeah. I always tell people energy is contagious. Uh, 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 totally. Energy is contagious. And, 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 and if, 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 if you know that energy is contagious, you will start understanding which people you should be around and which people you shouldn't be around. Um, let me appreciate Kanyele, uh, Kanyele Selevo. Uh, thank you for being part of this show, Chamba. Uh, Lawrence Bean Timanyana, uh, he says, affirmations are such a powerful tool. April Maps, everybody who's watching the Breakfast Assembly Coach, guys, this is one of the interesting show, guys. We're closing Women's Month with a bang with Bridget Edwards, author of Stress Gone, a complimentary men's health therapist. Hey, Mom Bridge, um, I, I want us to close because um, I, I know when it's, uh, uh, we pass an hour and network will start acting up, but before we go into close, um, there are two things that I want to discuss. I know you've um, uh, been um, one of the people who managed to climb uh, Mount Kilimanjaro. Uh, Twice. We, 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 I, want to, I, I want us to go there. But before we go there, how powerful and how dangerous is denial? Well, it is so dangerous from the point of view that most people don't even realize that they are in denial. That's the mm -hmm. scary thing about denial. And trust me, I know it because I lived there at one time in my life. Remember I explained <laughs> about my um, um, knowing that I was angry because of my brother passing and my mum passing. I was mm -hmm. in complete denial. So denial mm -hmm. is something really dangerous. But if we are, are and have the emotional maturity to ask our loved ones to give us some feedback, not criticism, but feedback, we can very quickly see that we are in a space of denial and then do some self-regulations, go inside, maybe some prayer, sit in meditation and try and figure out what it is. And this is why I am going to drop the link as soon as we're done and your Facebook is live is up, I will drop the link to my book because in there are lots of tools that anyone can go and use. They can get rid of denial. They can get rid of anger, depression, trauma, grief, addictions, even using the tools that I teach. So one last mm -hmm. thing I want to say in parting is I put up an Instagram post the other day, which I can also share. It's called heart intelligence. The heart is a hundred times more powerful electrically and 5,000 times
becomes more powerful magnetically than the brain. Mm -hmm. So I was talking about that positive energy that we can have with the positive emotions. When you're in that positive space, your heart, the field of the heart is 60 times greater than the field of the brain. That mm -hmm. heart energy is now going out into the world. So let me re-say that again. A hundred times more powerful electrically, 5,000 times more magne magnetically than the brain. So in other words, love tops thinking any day. So if you walk around saying, I love my work, I love my job, I love who I am, I love, I love, I love, putting that love out there, you're going to magnetically draw something back into your space. Now, you can tie that together with the I am statements by saying, I am love, I am joy, I am happiness, because that brings up this heart space, and you can, that love, remember, Moss, you cannot have love where you have fear. If you're living in fear, you have no love. You cannot have trust if you don't have love. Mm. And so by having, and where you have anger, you have a lack of love, a self-love very often. So this is so powerful. If you understand that, you can start to shift and change the direction of your life so quickly by eliminating all of those obstacles, emotional obstacles that have been in your way, and preventing you from achieving what you want. So I'm going to drop the link in there. And then just as a last thing, if anybody wants to do my course, I have an online course. Once they download the, um, or go to the website where the book is, they can download the book for a small contribution. I will be very grateful for any contribution that is made. I really do appreciate it. Honestly, if somebody doesn't have one cent and they are honest about it, they can have the book for free, Okay. That's my gift, mm. all right? But if you can make a contribution, and I trust mm. people's honesty and integrity, they can do so. Mm. Right at the bottom, I have a, an online course for a very short time. I am discounting that online course by $100. So it is only $97. If they want to do the course, I take them through a whole program of video material where they can learn. I work with them in a one-on-one -on -one space through the videos, taking a lot of the integrity and information from my book, but in, I break it down into really simple, easy, bite-sized things. And there's PDFs as well as videos so they can work with it. And then they can communicate with me directly and, and on the platform as well. So it's there, it's available to anybody who wants. Wow, 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 guys. What, what a show, what a show, what a show, guys. Let me appreciate everybody who's been part of the breakfast session with the coach, guys. We know, I know, you know, when I passed, uh, passed uh, 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 over 11 o'clock, guys, you know, the show must be really interesting. Um, but we're going to close in the next three minutes. But before we close, Bridge, um, I want to, I want you to share your personal experience because a lot of people, they, they, they want to do, try things, but they, they, they are so scared, you know. In 2015, when we met, I told you I want to go and climb Mount Kilimanjaro. Still today, I haven't done that. But can you share that experience? What happened that day when you decided, I'm going to do this? And what were the first steps that you took? And when you reached that peak of Mount Kilimanjaro, what did you think? Whoa, Moss. Okay, so I had just run Comrades. Um, this was in 97, I ran Comrades. And in 90, so I was really fit. 98, so, 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 uh, so, 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 I think it was. So, 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 sorry, Mambri. So you want to say to me, you, you ran that 90, 90 or what? How many kilometers? Yeah, comrades, it was 89.7 kilometers the year I ran. <laughs> let's, let, let's, give this woman, let's give this woman a round of applause, guys, wherever you are. Sure. So yeah, I I'm still contemplating it, even uh, today. I still even contemplating that I want to do that, but I can't even do 21 kilometers. But I, I I'm gonna do that. So I'm going to do affirmation today. I am going to run marathon, a uh, comrades marathon. I am going to run that marathon. Good for you, Mars. I'm so happy. So I I had run it, and listen, when I started running, I couldn't even run three kilometers. Okay, it took me. 
about four years to eventually, but you can do it faster. Okay. I was just lazy and I didn't believe I could do it. I didn't have the con the confidence I have in my head now. Um, so yes, I had been training and training and training. I've run, I ran comrades. I ran three, two oceans, which is 56 kilometers. And I decided I want to do something different. So Kilimanjaro was there and I thought, well, other people I knew had climbed Kilimanjaro. Why the hell don't I try? So it was the most amazing, amazing experience. I love the Tanzanian people. They are beautiful, amazing, incredible people. Uh, they had porters who helped us up the mountain. We had guides with us. It was really tough because the weather up there is extreme. Moss, you are almost 6,000 meters high. So it is cold. You have to be mentally and physically prepared. The most difficult part of it is the breathing. The oxygen, the higher you go, the less the oxygen there is. So it becomes more and more difficult. And you're taking one step at a time. And then the last little bit going right up to the summit is you literally, the, it's, it, the, the rocks are just like gravel. So you take one step and you slide and you take a step and you slide. You're literally moving like this. And you're climbing in the middle of the night. So we were climbing, uh, and there was full moon. So all we could see was like these ghosts moving in the mountain. We got up to the top at sunrise. It was beautiful. I, I just cried and cried and cried. And as I was crying, all my tears were like forming icicles on my face. I was so emotional. I was so tired, but I was so emotional just seeing this beautiful sun arriving on the, on the horizon, knowing I was on the top. I still had another kilometer to go to get to the summit itself. And one of my guides, his name was Stanley. He kept moving me because I kept turning. I was losing my head. I was losing, uh, you lose consciousness. And I kept wanting to go back down the mountain. He's like, no, ma'am, you need to go this way. You need to get to the summit. 45 minutes to walk one cup was a long way. But Moss afterwards, after I'd done comrades, after I had climbed Kilimanjaro, I knew that there was nothing that God could put in front of me for the rest of my life that I would never be able to achieve. I just knew it. It gave me such an incredible sense of self-worth, self-esteem. It really, I had to dig deepest into my heart to actually have the guts and courage. And then in 2001, a boyfriend and I had traveled through Africa. We spent 10 months traveling through Africa and we were in Tanzania. He hadn't climbed Kilimanjaro and he was like, I'm going to go and do it. I said, I'm coming with you. And I wasn't fit. I was not fit at all. We had been in the Land Rover for so long that we were so unfit. I hadn't been running. I hadn't been cycling. I've been doing no exercise, but I did it anyway. I did it because I was so determined. Got back up to that summit again, saw the sun coming up over the mountains, and I burst into tears all over again. <laughs> I cried so, all over again. <laughs> so, so, mom, you, 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 you climb Kilimanjaro twice, and you reach the summit. Yep, on both occasions. Yep, yep. Wow, guys, how, how old were you? If you Ooh, don't mind. Must. Um, I'm 56 now, and so that was 2001 was the second time I climbed it. So you work out the maths. <laughs> That's 28 wow, and 19 wow, years wow. Ago. And then the, the time before that was in 1998. So just a few years before that. So, yeah, I was in my 30s, I think. I think that's right. <laughs> yeah. Well. Guys, I'm, I'm so defeated. I, I'm so defeated. <laughs> but I'm going to take it as a motivation and an encouragement. Sure, Mom Bridge, you, ju you just created, you just unleashed something inside me. And I, I hope all our viewers, I can see Gobon Romang uh, Petit Maoka saying, thank you very much. I needed this kind of motivation since I'm going back to work. God bless you all. Oh, wow, I can see Mama, Mama Harry, Mo Newsin, um, and Dr. Win, everybody who's, who's here, guys. I hope we close this show at a high note. You, you'll never forget this woman. Uh, uh, Mambridge, um, before you go, um, th there's a trend that I want us to discuss, but I think it will be when you come back because you definitely need to come back before the end of the year. There's a global shift that, I'm th that I think is growing. 
um, young ladies don't want to get married anymore. Young guys think they, they, they now need to get married, but not in communion of property. So there's so much going on around the world. I don't, I don't know if it's only in South Africa or in Africa, but this is the global shift. So um, we, we're going to discuss it, but do you, do you have anything to say in, 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 in seconds? But this is not the discussion. We're going to discuss it when you come back. But are you aware of this um, global um, uh, shift? I am, and I'm the worst person to ask because I got married and divorced very young and I've never married again. So. <laughs> oh, I, my independence. <laughs> I absolutely no. love my independence. I love being able to do what I want, when I want, without having to ask a man permission. So, yeah, I'm the worst person. <laughs> Don't, don't corrupt my viewers, please. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, <That's> I, I, <laughs> you, you just made me. <laughs> I'm going to leave this one. <laughs> so, so, so. It, 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 it's a global shift that I've, 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 I've realized. And I think it's growing. Because young women currently, they want to go independent. And I don't know, maybe it's the crazy things that are going around the world. But what is, what is your, your last nuggets um, to our young women and our women um, across the continent, including our young boys? Because I think they, this, this young men, um, they've been neglected, especially um, I'm one of those people who criticize the concept of um, um, girl child. <laughs> Go uh, take a girl child, take a girl child. We 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 forgetting the boy child. So what what is your last nuggets around the issue of of young boys and young girls that are growing these people to become men in future and women in future, husbands and 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 wives? Okay, so my advice is going to be: please develop self love before you expect somebody else to love you. So mm -hmm. men and women. Develop your own self-love, your own self-worth, because another person will not be able to love you if you don't love yourself. And you will mm -hmm. never feel fulfilled in any relationship, whether it's marriage or just a general relationship, unless you have self-love and self-worth in you. And please, ladies and gentlemen, do not marry somebody for the simple idea that they are going to complete you or they are your other half. You are a mm -hmm. whole person. You are a whole person. You don't need another human being to complete you. You don't need another human being to define you. I come back to what I was mm -hmm. saying earlier about the I am statements. I mm -hmm. am a whole person. So if you go in looking for relationships for somebody because they've got money or they're going to provide for you or they are going to fulfill you, please do the work inside first. Fulfill yourself first. When mm -hmm. you fulfill yourself, you are going to be happy and healthy and then you can be in a relationship with, a, with somebody else who is a partner with you in life as opposed to being somebody who is going to be your enabler or your um, provider or your blesser. We don't need that. Fulfill mm -hmm. yourself. Love yourself first. And then everything else becomes so much easier. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you, Mambridge, for being part of this show. I appreciate you very much. And I'll, I'll keep saying this. You, you, you are one of those powerful women that I know. Talking to them, there's, there's a sense of development. There's a sense of you, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are in life because that's what you, you, your duty in life, your purpose in life. I think it was, it was to build people. It was to encourage people to be the best version of themselves. So thank you very much. And I wish the universe can open the doors for you and can bless you more abundantly. I know you are one of those spiritual people. And I believe you still have a long way to go and you still have a lot of people to change in this world. Oh, Moss, thank you so much. Bless you for those beautiful, kind words. You really, and thank you for doing what you're doing because you are the catalyst. You are motivating, inspiring people. 
not only in South Africa, but around the continent. And I've got, I saw one of my friends, she's from London. She's listening. That's Bridget is on there. She's listening from London. So trust me, your message is getting out around the globe. I will take this video today. I'll share it across all my platforms, wherever I can, so that people can hear this message. Thank you for being who you are, the beautiful human being that, that you are. From the day we met, I just, you and I had an instant connection the day we met, and I'm so grateful to that. So there's something beautiful inside you that you resonate. You give a lot back to the world, and I, I wish you rich blessings too. Because seriously, Moss, you're doing something incredible to motivate and inspire the youth and elderly people around the world. And maybe, 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 just maybe, you might motivate me to come and climb Kilimanjaro with you for the third time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I'm, 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 I'm a globetrotter too. I travel a lot. I was supposed to do a seminar in in in, in Tanzania this uh, uh, in this month, and I was supposed to do um Ghana again this month, and I was supposed to do Senegal in October. So due to um COVID nineteen, oh. Akulin, Akulin. Um, there's a lot that I, I, I was about to do this year, uh, like I did the past years. But we know things will come back to normal and we'll, go, uh, we'll grow together. But I'll invite you because I, I still need to go there. That's, that's one thing that I owe myself. I owe myself a Two Oceans Marathon. I owe myself Kilimanjaro. I owe myself um, um, a Comrades Marathon and Two Oceans. But this year, if it needs be, I'm going to run so way to marathon. So I'm studying Mambridge. Um, I want to do things because wow. I think I've achieved a lot of things that I wanted to achieve. So it's about time now I start concentrating on myself because I help a lot of people. Now I said this year and next year I dedicate it to Moss. So I'm going to do that, but I'm going to tell you when I'm doing that. Good for you. I support you 100% and I really, really wish you well, Moss. Thank you and thank you for today. I have loved having this conversation with you. Thank you so much. No, thank, thank you. Thank you, you very much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Mambridge. Um, before you go, I'm going to call you back again, I think maybe in, in, in November, to come now. We're going to discuss everything relationship, why these relationships are failing, and most particularly concentrating on young women and young boys, because that's, that's a crop that we need to, to realign, to work on their mindset, to work on their emotions, because we need to prepare a future of great leaders, great parents, because with the pace that we are going with currently, I don't see ourselves running a successful homes in a year. With pleasure, so Moss, be, I would love be, to be, be on, on the show again. Thank you so much. No, thank you very much. Enjoy your Tuesday, ma'am. Enjoy your day. I know Agas is still here. There's there's few winds around the country. There's few cold around the country. But go home and be home and stay safe. And most of all, I wish you, most importantly, a good health. Thank you, Moss. And to you and to all the viewers who've joined us today, thank you so much for their input, their comments. I really appreciate them. I'll drop the link for my book. And they're welcome to get that there. And if they've got any questions, they can inbox me anytime. Thank you, Moss. Bless thank you. And love to everyone. Thank you, Take Bridge. care. Goodbye, goodbye, thank goodbye. You. That was Bridget Bye. Edwards, guys. An author of Stress Gone, a complementary mental health uh, therapist, guys. Thank you very much to her for bracing this day. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not happy with time, guys. But she will be back again. Let me appreciate Bridget Calvey from London. Hi, dear. Thank you very much for being part of this show. Now I'm happy to know that. This show has gone above the, the the continent. Now we've skipped the oceans. Now we are in London. So thank you much to everybody who's watching. I appreciate everybody who's taking time to be part of the show. I am going to close this show with this uh, song, guys. This is one of the favorite songs. I, I appreciate everybody. This is the very fashion of the coach. Thank you, uh, Bridget Calvey. She said, yes, London is great, but South Africa holds my heart. Love you both and thank you. You must come back home, Bridget. Thank you, guys. Don't forget, next year, 4 and 5 March, the biggest um sadek entrepreneurship event in south africa sun city we're hosting uh, 15 member countries they will be coming entrepreneurs from various countries in sadek so if you want more information www.startupsadek.org if you want to send information uh, to request information info at startupsadek.co.org 
And for me, if you want more information about me and my company, www.accuracygroup.co.za. All the platforms, social media platforms, most remain if you want to follow me. Thank you for everybody who's been part of this amazing show, guys. I'm so, I'm so much motivated and encouraged. Don't forget affirmations. I am. Who? What a powerful statement. From today, guys, take away those negative thoughts. Take away those negative um, 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 things inside your heart, inside your mind. Start affirming yourself as I am in a positive way. Never, never go back to that I am in a negative way. To Mambridge, thank you very much for making this show, guys. Let me go back to other things that I have to do today. There's a lot in my plate. I appreciate everybody who's been part of this amazing show, guys. This is a growing show. This Thursday, guys, now we're going to... This is, remember, yo, 1st September, spring day today. But it's so cloudy. It seems like it's going to be raining today. Everybody, guys, I appreciate everybody. And we're talking tourism. This is Tourism Month. We're going to interview people in the tourism space, guys. So if you want to be part of this show, guys... Remember, every Thursday, every Tuesday, every Saturday, 10 o'clock Central African time. Everybody, guys, we, 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 we're not talking to South Africans only. We're talking to everybody around the continent. So today we are talking everything psychology, everything emotions, stress. Why, what do we need to do when we feel down, when we feel we are angered, when we feel we are pressed by this thing called life? There's so many things that we can do. Thank you to Mom Bridget. She's going to be back, guys. I promise you she's going to be back because I believe time didn't do much justice to us. So if we want this show again, guys, drop your comments. Tell us what you learned today. Keep motivating us to keep bringing you best shows of this um, breakfast session. From me, the business coach, have a nice day, guys. Enjoy your day. Bye.